that I'm committing to Vlogmas. But I will say, this time of the year, content creators go hard. And I am always so impressed with the amount of videos that people can put out during Vlogmas. And although I realize and recognize that whenever I commit to something, especially when it comes to YouTube, it just like slowly trickles off. So, mm, about that. That's why I'm not gonna say I'm doing Vlogmas. And also you probably won't even see a Christmas tree in my apartment this entire season. So this is an anti-Vlogmas Vlogmas attempt. That's, that's what this is. I'm not promising content every single day, but I am gonna do my best to just uh, put out some fun content, you know? It's been a while and we'll use this month to try and kick stuff back up. Okay, so here we go. Anti-Vlogmas Vlogmas. I don't, for a split second, try and pretend like I know everything there is to know about trends. But trend forecasting is 100% part of my job. It's something that I have to focus on as much as I possibly can. But what is trend forecasting? Like, that's such a weird thing to say because I don't think really anybody knows exactly how to trend forecast. I read a brilliant article a while back by Hai Snobiety, I believe is how you say it. Uh, and it stuck with me for a really long time. It really broke down into three parts. The first part was about a company that was not a legit trend forecasting company. However, they got invited to speak at a conference about trends that were up and coming and they coined the term Normcore, which Normcore took off, it blew up, and it really truly made the minimalism movement that we're seeing right now. You know, you have all this like modern clean lines. The big joke is that Jerry Seinfeld and Homer Simpson are like the pillars of Normcore fashion because it's really just about like jeans and a t-shirt kind of thing, basically dad clothes. The joke was on all of the companies that bought into this and decided to join the trend forecast because this was actually an art installation that this supposed trend forecasting company came up with to sort of prove a point and the point was proven but it's great and I love the idea that that happened and I think now more and more with social media you're seeing all of these art pieces and people just kind of making a joke or mockery of fashion institutions that have been around for years and years that just don't really serve a purpose anymore. The second part of this article was talking about the idea that companies spend so much money to get a hold of the trend forecasting and who's really in charge of these things. Ultimately, it's a pretty heavily guarded thing because these companies will pay so much money to get a hold of the trends. You later realize in the article that the joke is even more so on them this year because everything went out the window. You have so many things changed over night and who would have in a million years thought athleisure was going to be the new thing and the thing that people are trying to get a hold of but i think part of my job is trying to figure out those trend forecasts for free and the point of this article was really to break down the fact that that's exactly what these big trend forecasting companies are doing. A lot of them have admitted to following young teenagers and different up and coming YouTubers and TikTokers and Instagrammers to get the new fashion. One of them even said that they were following like a group of kids that were going to Coachella to then claim that that's going to be the new fashion for up and coming like whatever season they're going into. It's just hilarious to think that that's what it's come to. It used to really only be the fashion houses that had 
the ability to forecast the trends. And I think now with social media that has completely changed. I think now more than ever, anybody can look at and sort of read the room to see what the trends are gonna be. It really just becomes curating what you're surrounding yourself with, identifying the trends and the brands through that. now the best thing that I can do is give you some tips on how I trend forecast for myself and for my business. Again, I don't pretend like I know everything and I think that article is proof that nobody knows anything to be honest with you. I think the important part is trying to make it as fun and true to yourself as possible. Definitely curation. You want to curate and kind of follow the guidelines of what those companies admitted that they do. Follow people that inspire you and trends that you enjoy seeing. One of the biggest lessons for myself is realizing that art and cinema and all of those cliche things that truly impact society also impact fashion. I think a perfect example right now is two shows on Netflix that are huge, The Crown and The Queen's Gambit. And both of those are heavily reflected in the style that's going on today. I can't get onto my Instagram account without seeing a targeted ad for those sheep sweaters that Princess Diana used to wear that she made huge. And I know I talk a lot about Princess Diana, but I think that also just goes to show that public figures, whether they were historical or someone modern, they really do impact fashion more than we will ever realize. I do have a prediction. I did notice, obviously, anytime that there's like a Matrix resurgence, the Matrix comes back. And the next movie that's coming up that's gonna be like sci-fi fandom is Dune. And Dune, very login look clothing. So, are we gonna see some correlation with that? I don't know, but I will say, that's me doing some trend forecasting. <laughs> very muted brown tones though, so we shall see. We shall see. The last piece of advice that I will leave you with that I guess to me is the most important part. Don't be a gatekeeper. I think fashion taken incorrectly can make people feel insecure or not confident in who they are or what it is that they're trying to project to the world. And I think when you get into gatekeeping and making someone feel like they don't have access to that type of clothing or if they don't have access to that type of look financially, that can really take the enjoyment out of fashion. Ultimately, I think that's probably why I love vintage so much. It's very easily accessible. And I hope that, that my YouTube channel shows that. That yes, I know I sell it for a living and that's part of my business model, but the reality is I'm not trying to hide from you guys how I get a hold of my vintage. Like I make it abundantly clear. And I hope that if financially you don't feel comfortable purchasing from a vintage seller, you realize that it is still accessible to anybody because ultimately and i know at this point i'm rambling but like if my job went away because there was no longer any vintage available that doesn't mean that there's a scarcity mentality anymore it means that like something good happened and we figured out how to get rid of textile waste so there's that angle which i've thought about doing an entire youtube video on someday there's a lot to that but anyways, I'm rambling at this point. If you think trend forecasting is the end all be all, it's, that's, that's not the point of fashion. And I think it's pure proof in that article that nowadays the power is in our hands to create the trends. And I think that's the most enjoyable part. And the last thing that I'm gonna leave you with that I've been thinking a lot about lately, historically speaking, fashion has just erupted after very tumultuous times. 
you know, World War II, you had within five years, the new look just exploded. Just this very elegant, put together look that people just wanted to escape from what they had experienced five years prior. And I think that's probably gonna happen again, where when things start to normalize, whatever that might be, fashion is gonna be big and it's gonna be bold again. And I think that's a good thing because again, fashion is self-expression, it's fun, it's art, and it's what you make of it. Okay, thanks for joining my TED Talk. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.